so this is part two of the memory operator tutorial and we're just going to take the setup further so in the first part we created this simple setup this simple delay effect using expresso and now we're going to create this effect uh, using multiple objects and multiple delays so this lesson is a bit more complicated but um, as long as you do the memory operator tutorial then uh, it should make sense and I'm going to try and explain it as clearly as I can. So our original setup looked something like this. We basically got the planet driving everything. We use a memory operator, uh, basically creating a six frame delay. Um, we get the vector position. We just offset it X slightly and then recombine the vector data and then basically output it to the moon's global position. And that gives us an offset and a time delay. So this is taking care of the position offset and this is taking care of the time delay. Right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create a list. I'm just gonna create a null and call it moons like that. And I'm gonna drop this moon in there and I'm going to label this moon zero, and then I'm going to create a few copies. Oops. Control D, that's the After Effects shortcut. So I'm just going to control drag and create three more copies. I'm going to name this one. This should be moon zero. This one's going to be moon two, and this one's going to be moon three, like that. And I'm just going to go back to my Expresso, and I'm going to create a hierarchy operator like that drag that in and I'm also going to get an object index on the general okay so hierarchy basically allows us to uh, use this list and we need to set it up so the reference is not expresso it's moons like that make sure the reference mode is absolute reference uh, start path is D, that means down, so it basically looks at moons, the null, and then it goes down a level. And then N means next, so it basically just goes through this entire list and uh, carries out operations, and it does this for every frame. So it goes through every item in the list, and then next frame it does the same. So I'm just going to link this to object index. Now with object index, we can basically get the index of each item in the list. So this is zero as it's named. This is one, this is two, and this is three. So this is useful because if we want to give each uh, object a different offset, we can basically say the offset's 100. We can uh, basically multiply that 100 by the object index, and then we're going to get offsets of 100, 200, 300, 400, so that's, um, that's what it allows us to do. And what we need is, I'm gonna select object on moon zero. And this is basically now a container. It's not actually moon zero, it's basically every item in the list. So imagine this kind of like an array. If I link this instance to this object, we're basically now feeding every object in this list into this kind of container object. So this could be any object, it could be moon2, it could be basically any of them. And it will work. So if I just play this back as it is, let's see what happens. I'm just going to move the planet. And uh, all four objects are following the planet. And you can't see them because they're all in the same position. So let's give them a bit of position offset so we can see them separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the each individual object's index. Now right now this is index 0 here. So um, I basically want the indexes to go 1, 2, 3, 4 because when you multiply by 0 uh, that creates some problems. So I'm going to add a math node like that, math add, and I'm just going to quite simply add one. And this is an integer, so I'm going to set the data type to integer. 
So now I'm basically outputting index values of one, two, three, four for each object. So we could basically use this as a kind of uh, multiplier. So I'm going to create a constant and I want the X shift to be in 100 unit increments. So I'm going to call this constant, sorry, I'm going to give it a value of 100 like this. And I'm going to use math multiply. So I'm just going to add math add, set it to multiply. And I'm going to use my object index, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to multiply it by my constant, 100. So now we're outputting 100, 200, 300, 400 offsetted positions. We previously set input 1 to 300. So I don't want to use this anymore. I want to use my new kind of uh, staggered uh, offset. So hopefully this should work now. So let's see what happens. And as you can see, the objects really have shifted and they're all moving at the same time, but we're going to sort that out next. I'm actually going to increase this offset slightly. It doesn't seem to be enough. So all I have to do is just go to my constant and just increase that to 200. So now it's going to be 200, 400, 600, 800. This one's still centered. That's very strange. Math add. Ah, I didn't put one here. So basically this is the problem uh, zero creates. We're not getting that initial offset. So I just need to make this one. And now everything's offsetting nicely. The only problem is uh, we, have, we haven't got the time delay. So we're going to sort that out next. That's very simple to sort out. We can basically, um, we could, this is basically outputting now one, two, three, four. So we could just link that to the history level and each, um, each object is gonna have a slightly different time delay if we link it to the history level because the history level basically controls the amount of delay as we kind of discovered in the previous tutorial. So it's going to be very slight, but we should be able to notice it. So I'm just going to play that back. And you can definitely see a slight delay there. So if we want to exaggerate this, again, we could use a, a multiplier. So in between this link, I can create a math add node again. Set it to multiply. That's an integer, so I'm just going to set it to integer. I'm just going to break that link and Make sure that it runs through our math multiplier. And I'm going to give it a multiplier of, say, uh, 3. So let's run that back again. And now the delay is a lot more pronounced. So yeah, I um, hope that wasn't too complicated. It's actually very simple, but it can be quite daunting when you look at this graph. And uh, the great thing about the setup is we can basically create more copies and we don't have to name them and it automatically just updates the position delay and the, you'll notice these end ones seem to uh, the delay doesn't seem to reach these kind of end objects that's because we don't have enough history depth I'm just gonna set that to 100 as you know the history depth is like the history buffer so we need to give it enough buffer so that should sort this problem out and yep, as you can see now, we get this very cool delay effect. I'm just going to lower the multiplier. So I bet you can imagine some pretty cool uses of this. Uh, reminds me of the kind of 80s arcade games something like Space Harrier. So yeah, uh, any questions, ask me below. Um, it is a bit complicated, but uh, thanks for watching.